take our seats. We'll get started. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, February um, 15, 2024 legislative session. Would the clerk please call the roll? Michael Yerden. Present. Herbert Yerden. Here. Edward Gilson. Here. David Foles. Here. Roy Reha. Here. John Martino. Here. Frank Bombarda. Here. Paul House. Here. James Weatherup. Here. Mary Ellen Chesbro. Here. Linda Lockwood. Here. Richard Klein. Present. Patrick Twist. Here. Stephen Walpole. Here. Kevin Hill. Here. James Scanlon and Mark Excuse. Robert or District 17 is vacant. Robert Wilmot. Here. Marie Shaw. Here. Paul Conley. Here. Noel Samuelson. Here. James Karasik. Here. Michael Soloway. Here. Mark Greco. Here. Frank Castilia. When you miss it. Mr. Chairman, that's 23 present, one excused, and one vacant. Thank you. Would you now lead us in the invocation? As we come together today, let us be thankful for its blessings, its opportunities, and its challenges. Help us to be ever mindful of opportunities to render our service to fellow citizens and to our community. Keeping in mind always the enduring values of life, exerting our efforts in those areas, and on those things upon which future generations can build with confidence. Grant us clarity of purpose and protect us from all distractions. Amen. 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 Now apply. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> First, we need to have resolution GC4 by Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution for urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution appointing an individual to fill a vacancy in the office of county legislator in and for the 17th legislative district. Thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome Charles Berger to the uh, to the chambers as a potential new legislator, District 17. As a former lieutenant for the Oswego City Police Department, a county employee, a business owner, and community-oriented individual, I feel he would be a great addition to this legislative body and to the constituents of District 17, and I look forward to working with him. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of Charles Berger, Legislator District 17? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, one excused, and one vacancy. Thank you. Mr. Berger, come forward to be sworn in by Judge Gilbert. Support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And to faithfully discharge. And faithfully discharge. The duties of county legislator. The, the duties of county legislator. For the 17th district. For the 17th district. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Legislator Berger will be a welcome addition. We'll be then now to approval minutes. I trust we read the minutes from the January 4th meeting. Move it. Uh, any objections? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, at this time, if we could have Tammy Thompson, the Director of Special Children's Services from the Health Department, come forward for a 30 year. Um, 
plaque or citation book, sadly also retired. Tammy Thompson. And the health committee, we are done for, and, and obviously Tammy Thompson. How do we get to that point that we're serving all the children in the community? So I've joked with her for the last few months telling her she can't leave. Um, I do want her to enjoy retirement. I do want to make, make sure everybody knows it's a vacancy and it's going to be hard to fill those shoes. Um, because besides doing that, how many committees are you on? A lot. A lot. <laughs> Just about everyone I'm on, and I know I'm on nine. by as well. Um, and uh, Tammy's always there. She's always got great input. She's always got this, I think, outside the box attitude. Uh, and she's always got this uh, complacency of making sure that everybody's always heard and that everyone that has an opinion is entitled to share that opinion with other people. I know I'm being a little bit windy, but. That, that made you work for us that much longer. <laughs> uh, congratulations on your retirement. Vera? Yes, so Tammy had several names and roles at the health department. One was the moral compass of the health department. Um, definitely someone we go to if we have any concerns or questions about something that may be in conflict. She is also the voice of the health department. So if you call us, that's who you'll hear on the answering machine is Tammy. And that has been um, pretty much the staple through all of COVID. And now, before she left me, I made sure that she did the message um, on the answering machine. She has truly been a champion for our children with um, children and youth with special health care needs. For 30 plus years, I could not be more proud to work beside Sammy, and I thank you. Things will, will, you won't miss a beat. 
and I am just a public holiday. Five minutes. Um, my name is Mary Ann Hartman. My husband and I own a farm out on County 7 in Hannibal. We have been at that farm since 1957, not me, my in-laws uh, have owned that farm. And before that it was a Malone farm. Um, so good afternoon and thank you for giving me the time to discuss the request for correction to tax roll is what I'm here for. <coughs> In 2023, our ag agricultural assessment exemption was removed from our tax roll due to a decision to not mail the renewal form, the RP305R. We have done this for 20 years. This has been renewed. My first knowledge of it, that something was wrong, was when the school tax bill came. And I said, this has got to be a mistake. There's something wrong here. So to make a very long and stressful story short, I went before the Hannibal School Board and gave testimony, as I'm doing today, and asked them to correct and replace my exemption to the school board role. And they did. They voted to support us. The, they added our exemption back on for their purposes, the school board, and they refunded our overpayment, which we had, of course, paid in full anyway, um, and returned just a little over $1,000 to us. Um, this, of course, filtered right down to my property tax bill, which arrived in January, and I knew it was going to come in January, and I knew it was going to be without the exemption. And in all of the past years, and I am talking 20 that I can prove, the Agricultural Assessment Renewal Certification, which is that RP305R, arrives to us the previous December, the prior December, and we complete it and return it. This was the very first year we did not receive that form to prompt us to complete and return. Um, when I started investigating, um, we were also told that a notice was sent out to us advising that the exemption was being dropped. Uh, we did not receive that. I also requested a copy of that said notice from my township, and it never came. <coughs> I'm yet to this day to be able to see it. So the decision to not mail the renewal form after 20 years of history caught us completely unaware, as well as some other farmers, I'm sure, but I'm here for me. Um, so we have attached the, um, to the paperwork today the completed form, which is the proper RP554. It's an application for corrected tax roll. And we very respectfully <coughs> ask that you please read this, consider it, and please do vote in our favor to have this exemption placed back on our tax roll. We are seniors living in uh, Hannibal, outside of Hannibal, and I did pay that complete bill. And it would be awfully nice to get a little bit of that back, to put it back into the tax account for the next bill that comes. 
Uh, so I thank you for the time, and I respectfully again ask you that you consider to place this back on my tax roll. And that's about all I have to say, except thank you very much for your time, and specifically, Noel, thank you for your support and your guidance. And that will do it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on now to reports, reports of county official legislator uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the time. Uh, because this just happened yesterday, I don't really have any super prepared remarks, but I did want to uh, make a point of it because we've worked on this for 17 years. Uh, some of the people in this room, uh, Tim Stahl, we started working uh, when we were on the anti-poverty task force in 2017 to become a work-ready county. Uh, and yesterday we were notified that we had achieved 100% of the goal to become the first uh, work-ready community or work-ready county in New York State. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that we have uh, 55 businesses that are now supporting the use of the uh, National Career Ready Certification, uh, which is a nationally recognized credential that establishes an individual skills and work readiness. So we have 50 and 55 businesses recognizing that, and we have had 633 students, high school students, college students, and under or, uh, under or unemployed adults take and pass the assessments in Oswego County. So what does this mean? It's, I think it's really important for, uh, for the Micron uh, project that's coming to town. Workforce is going to be super critical. And for us, if you go to the work, uh, the ACT is the same group that does the ACT test for college. Um, if you go to that, if you just uh, type in Google Work Keys Oswego County or Work Keys New York State, it shows a picture of New York State. And it shows one county in color, and that's us. So we're the first one in all of New York State. And in fact, we're the first one in all of the Northeast is what I found out yesterday. So we can lead from Oswego County. This is something that took a long time to achieve, but I think it's going to be really important uh, for our students. All of our P-TECH, if you've heard about P-TECH, all of our P-TECH students take it when they're juniors. Uh, they're now offering it to students in Fulton uh, and in Mexico high schools. Uh, especially for uh, students that are not heading on to college, and I think it's just going to be super. I just wanted to make a point of it. I think, uh, you know, congratulations to all the partners who helped in this. This was a partnership of uh, of City Boses, of uh, Hugo County Community College, of Oswego County the Shinneman Association. The IDA provided one of the first grants, Operation Oswego County. I think it's going to be a big deal going forward, and I hope it promotes more of those sorts of collaborations going forward. So, uh, uh, if you just Google Work Keys, uh, ACT, or Work Readiness at Oswego County, you'll find it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and that is uh, an actually a pretty impressive accomplishment. Thank you, reports of standing committees. Thank you, reports of special committees. Legislator House. I have a recess, please. Yes. We have a second for recess. Second. 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 Okay, one well, on recess. Probably well, that. Call this meeting in order. Thank you. Thank you. Well, lost one. Missing a couple. Alright. I guess they're still on the gym. Let's do the gym. Recess. Anytime. All good? All good. We're here again. Thank you. We're back in the middle. Back in order now. Moving now to resolutions, government courts, and consumer affairs. Resolution GC1 by Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I also move the resolution. Resolution adoption. The clerk, please read the heading. Resolution authorizing the execution of a joint defense agreement by and between the City of Oswego, the Oswego City School District, concerning the Oswego Harbor Power LLC Tax Victorium. Yes, this is a, a reduced uh, overall cost of uh, defending the taxes and uh, procedures. And this 
Oswego County is uh, fairly 26%. Uh, the city of Oswego is 21%. The Oswego City School District paid 52% of the cost of the services. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul. The chairman is 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one please. Thank you. Resolution of GC2 by Legislator Holt. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution denying administrative correction and tax refund or credit pursuant to New York State Real Property Tax Law 554 and 556 regarding real property located at 865 County Route 7 in the town of Hannibal. Well, this pretty much explains everything that's in here. Thank you. Any discussion? Legislator Castillo. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, one, I want to thank uh, the Director of uh, Real Property for giving us a detailed list of what happened and how things happened and what the law says and what we're required to do by law. I understand that, as everybody does. But there comes a time when the legislative body, elected officials, can circumvent the law and say, we know what the law says, but we would like to do something different. We would like to do what is being requested of us. There's many times that People come to us and ask for, for things. This is one time when, out of 20 years, that this person missed the Ag District request for you know, the tax purpose. They went in front of the school district. The school district gave them, accepted their request and refunded them. Mr. Church, this $1,000 that they're asking for is a refund. What is the percentage of that of the full tax uh, levy? How much, how much is that going to hurt us in the county? It's about two one thousandths of a percent. Okay. Now, I know that people are going to say that's not the point. The point is, if we do it for one, are we going to do it for all? And I'm not saying that we should do it for all. But if we make an exception now, this person, if they make the mistake again and do not send in their request, I would say we say no. But this is a one-time deal. It's a one-time thing. And I'm going to ask for a roll call vote on this. And I'm going to ask you guys to vote no on this. A yes vote would mean that you're going to go in favor of denying. A no vote means that you're going to give the refund. I'm just asking you, and I'm asking you guys to look into your hearts and say, things change in this county so many times, and everybody's, you know, laws change. If you don't, you don't, get, a, if you don't get a notice, maybe you thought something happened, and you don't have to do it every year. But, 20 years you've done it. <clears throat> they do it again, it's a no for me. But right now, it's a no on denying them the request. Please vote in favor of it. Roll call vote, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislative Yeah, I, I have some personal experience with this because I too have missed filing that form and it cost me an extra thousand dollars in the past. But I, I will say, although I sympathize with Mrs. Hartman, um, and, and I understand completely where she stands on this, and it's unfortunate. But as Frank said, if we do it for one, we got to do it for everyone. You know what? You'll never forget to get it in again, whether it's mailed to you or not. And it's not a matter of it's a thousand dollars. I certainly would like to help a constituent, uh, but if we help this one, we have to help all. Of them. Every time somebody does hand in a form, they're going to be knocking on our door, asking for a redress by the legislature. So, uh, for that reason, I'll be voting yes in favor of it. not refunding. So I feel hard about that because of the court, because of the uh, course of the law. That's how I'm going to vote. Just want to understand. Thank you, Legislator Rio. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman and Legislator Castillo, you said that we have opportunities to circumvent the law. Maybe I used the word wrong. Circumvent, in this case, would be to break the law. And unfortunately, as much as we feel for the individual and how many years they pay properly, we are not the assessing authority. We are not the ones that made the mistake. We maybe get blamed for the mistake right now. But we are not the ones that miss sending some form out. We are not the ones to report this to. We can't break the law. She should possibly be able to go to a higher authority or court to be able to get redress. But the, the, I believe the school board made a mistake in doing this, and I think we have to vote yes on this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Hill. Yeah, I believe that um, Director Metz uh, made a, a sound reasoned argument to why um, we have to support the denial. Um, I know Mrs. Harvard very well, um, <coughs> customer at the store that my family owns, um, so I do feel for her. Uh, but as an assessor for the city of Oswego, I am bound to not only uphold my oath as a legislator, but I am bound to uh, real property tax law uh, as the assessor. So I am, uh, there's no possible way uh, that I could go against that. And uh, for any of us to do so would be a direct violation of our oath that we took uh, when we became a legislator. So um, unfortunately, and I, and I do feel for Mrs. Harmon very much, uh, I have to uh, support the resolution. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Gilson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I agree with what's said. I, I won't uh, repeat it. I would just add to it, um, to Legislator Casile's comment. Um, there may be others out there, uh, and we would be acting not only against the law, but we're opening up potential liability that we don't even have it capped or, or know what it possibly could be. So it's, it isn't just the $1,000. It could lead to a, an awful lot more than so. Um, it, it's unfortunate. I feel bad as well, but I'll have to support this. Thank you. Legislator Castillo. Sorry that I used the wrong term there. But, uh, in the fact that we can ask for something different. It's not going against, you know, it, it, yeah, you're saying it's going against the law. I'm sorry. There's times when you have to go against the law in the best interest of your constituents. And in this case, we're looking at people that are on a fixed income and looking at people that have always done their due diligence in paying this and turning everything in. But now, they, one year they didn't, and they're asking for a fraction of what we would lose by giving this back. And if there's other people out there, then yeah, maybe we should look at a different way to, you know, to, to help them. But Right now, I'm still voting no on this, and I ask, still ask for a roll call vote. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Michael Yarden. Yes. Herbert Yarden. Yes. Edward Gilson. Yes. David Holtz. Yes. Roy Rehill. Yes. John Martino. Yes. Frank Lombardo. Yes. Paul House. Yes. James Weatherup. Yes. Mary Ellen Chesbro. Yes. Linda Lockwood. Yes. Richard Klein. Yes. Patrick Twist. Yes. Stephen Walpole. Yes. Kevin Hill. Yes. James Scanlon's been marked excuse. Charles Berger. Yes. Robert Wilmot. Yes. Marie Shaw. No. Paul Conley. Yes. Noel Samuelson. No. <coughs> James Karasek. No. Michael Soloway. Yes. Mark Greco. Yes. Frank Castilia. No. Mr. Chairman, that's 20 in favor, four opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Moving to resolution GC3 by Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I'll move this resolution. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification, Department of Public Defender holiday premium. Yes, this is for the Student County Public Defender's Office. It's a new budget increase modification of $15 million for the holiday premium. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, two opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution GC5 by Legislator Holtz. 
Uh, this is a title change that better aligns with redefined duties at the same grade and with no budget impact. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution HS4 by Legislator Rehab. Uh, jump ahead one. I thought it was HS3. Let's do three. All right. All right. I'll try to get it right too. Good sir. Uh, for the following resolution, introduce the dash. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing mental hygiene division suicide prevention coalition contractual amendment. Uh, this is a uh, contractual expense for suicide for the suicide prevention coalition uh, to coordinate uh, support, uh, asking for a staffing increase from a 0.75 full-time employee to one uh, full-time employee. Uh, the funding increase is 11,694 for 2024, uh, and due to some de decreases in other contracts, the funding is available within the 2024 budget. So the change will be budget neutral. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Right. Mr. Chairman, is 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Now to resolution HS4 by Legislator Rita. I offer the resolution in urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification to Department of Social Services to accept federal funds for the transportation incentive program. Uh, this budget mod is to accept $14,107 in transportation initiative program funding for 2024. Uh, this is a, provides federal funding to help meet the transportation needs of individuals who are eligible uh, for temporary assistance or needy families who are employed or participating in allowable work activities. These are 100% federal funds, no local share, uh, so there is budget neutral. Excuse me. Thank you. Any discussion? Shop. Could you define for me allowable work activities? Uh, Marty, would you be able to elaborate on that? Allowable work activities. How did it have anything to do with going to work or going to uh, to training that going to get them into work? Right. It's both. Both. It's both. So it can be car repairs, it can be gas, it can be um, whatever is needed for them to maintain their transportation. But her question is, what is all, all considered uh, allowable work activities? Allowable work activities. It's either working or being trained. Right. So it's to maintain a job that they have or accept a job that's been offered to them or to go to training that's going to bring them to a job. We're not getting cars for anyone anymore, correct? Not with that money. We're not purchasing the cars. We're able to help them repair the cars and in some cases pay for gas. Thank you. Legislator Twist. Yeah, I had a similar question beforehand. It was answered basically that everything had to stay within the scope of this back page. Am I correct, Legislator, Legislator Rito? And that is that's within that scope of the repairs of vehicles when people are working. Uh, the uh, the was, information is pretty is pretty elaborate. Um, I don't have my well, that, right on the back of one of these pages. It has a pretty good detailed criteria, and that's the way it was explained to me. I think it's with the program guidelines. Yeah. So has, the, yes. Yeah. Program guidelines. Yep, there's a full page of all of the uh, program caps, uh, general criteria, uh, what's covered. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's going to be in favor, one opposed, and one excused. I mean, I would suggest that we keep, um, that we continue to, to use this particular program because it keeps people off uh, from going back on services who were on services in many cases. So it's about self-sufficiency and getting people into jobs and keeping those jobs by being able to help them get to and from until they can afford it on their own. Sorry for the uh, preparation. And Mr. Chairman, I want to change the count. Um, Legislative facility voted against it. It's 22 in favor, 2 opposed, and 1 excused. Thank you. Resolution HS5 by Legislator Rio. Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution under just option. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution appointing a member to the Child Protective Advisory Council, Department of Social Services. 
Uh, as many of you know, the Child Protector Protection Advisory Council, or CPAC, was established by the legislature at the recommendation of the Health and Human Services Committee in 2010. Uh, the bylaws of CPAC require that members be approved by the legislature to serve a three-year term. Um, we are putting forward uh, Emily Watson's name. Uh, she works for Liberty Resources and is a longtime contributor to the mission of CPAC. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, there's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution HS6 by Legislator Rio. Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution establishing capital project number 0224, Christie Golf Course Camp Service. Uh, this is to utilize $20,000 in an ARPA funding to create a beautiful 18-hole Frisbee golf course at our lovely asset Camp Zerbe. All right, thank you. I, I would offer the building this Frisbee golf course at Camp Zerbe in Williamstown will bring an abundance of tourism-related benefits to the surrounding communities. This will serve as a new activity for county residents to enjoy as well as opening the opportunity for tournaments, which in turn will fill hotels, restaurants, and other small businesses. As some of you may know, this was Lori Mangano's passion project to establish Frisbee Golf. So in her honor and memory, I urge all my colleagues to adopt this resolution. Any other discussion? Legislator Castillo. I would like to uh, explain my vote, uh, Mr. Chairman and Legislator. I was under the understanding that Camp Zerbe was and, and I'm very, I was very in favor of uh, funding anything in Camp Zerbe because it was going to be the North Country's answer to Camp Hollis, which is about 90% child uh, activities and things for the uh, underprivileged or whatever in the county to go and experience things. I think that this Turning it into a Frisbee golf course is going to be detrimental to that goal. And I think it'll hurt the uh, Camp Zerby more than it'll help them. So therefore, I will not be voting in favor. It's not because I'm against Camp Zerby, because I am. Not in the form of a Frisbee golf course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to put out there, how many acres? 100? 200? 500. 500. 500. So, so I think we got room to be able to put whatever we want on that property. I would think so. Okay, let's show your Yeah, I think one thing we ought to consider here is that we've got a lot of natural uh, trails out there at Camp Derby right now. So if a minor investment for us to so put them up there. And uh, so we got walk trails now, but this will connect those trails up to make a nice walk through. This is not a big cost thing uh, to that wise, uh, very minimal. And this is the one that's going to go out through. Uh, Scribe and, and uh, we decided we didn't want it up there, so we decided to move it here. So we had funds in for the equipment already. So I think this would be a great benefit for, for the people of North Country and uh, and also make the observing a little proud at the same time. So I wish you would all support in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, one opposed, and one Thank you. Moving to the Economic Development Planning Committee, Legislator Chesbro with EP1. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution in urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the Oswego County Office of Mobility Management to accept funding from the Alzheimer's Association Central New York Chapter. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, and apparently uh, Oswego County has been doing such a good job with our mobility management and transporting our seniors as well as our farmer market that the Alzheimer's Association has decided to give us $20,000 to further the stuff and the work that we have been able to do already accomplish and to accomplish more in the future. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution EP2 by Legislator Chesler. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution awarding professional services contract RFP 23 
CDPT-005 Transit Software. Um, yes, this is a new way that Oswego County can once again go into the new tech age of being able to help all the people that are interested in any kind of public transportation. It is software that can be put on an application, on a computer, on a phone, on a whatever, that you can actually track where the, the um, buses are, when they're going to come. It's kind of like a map quest. I'm here, I need to go here, and the app can show you exactly where you have to go, how you connect, what bus you're on, and when you get back. And the best part of it is that this has all been funded through DOH and ATC with no matching funds, and it will be a great step in the right direction of being able to connect people, as well as this is the same software that Centro has. So we meld them together, and now we're going to be able to get people from Oswego all the way up to Syracuse and using Centro, as well as our public transportation. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Moving to uh, the Health Committee, Resolution HE1 by Legislator Correct. Turn my page. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, fellow legislators, I offer the following resolution for your consideration. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution appointing a member to the Spigo County. So the uh, Oswego County Traffic Safety Board plays an important role with the county, both in uh, education, uh, enforcement, uh, working with other agencies uh, to ensure the safety of uh, people, including uh, pedestrians, drivers, children. Uh, the person recommended is Brandon Loomis from the Oswego City Police Department. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Resolution HE2 by Legislator Solomon. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and encourage its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution appointing a legislative member to the Oswego County Board of Health. Mr. Chairman, this needs to be amended on the second whereas paragraph to eliminate for a two-year term. And on the resolved paragraph, eliminate the words two year and change uh, the expiration date from February 28, 2026 to December 31st, 2025. Thank you. We have a second by Legislator Rio. Any discussion? I'll be abstaining. We'll abstain. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, one excused, and one abstained. All right, thank you. Back to the original resolution as amended. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, one excused, and one abstained. Okay. Thank you. For the, for the audience who may have missed or not read, it was to a point. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Resolution HE3 by Legislative President. Mr. Chairman, fellow legislators, I present, uh, present the following resolution for your consideration. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the reclassification of one position in the health department. So this is uh, changing a position uh, to fill the position of compliance program administrator uh, to be reclassified to the corporate compliance officer. Um, the, uh, the money stays the same but with a small change of 3,195 increase. This is part of uh, the corporate compliance program. It's also a vital piece of what the health department is doing and working itself to become accredited in, in a couple of years. Uh, a lot of work and efforts being put into this that accreditation will bring uh, a lot of benefits to the, a county this size. So it is part of that whole thing. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, it's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Moving to the Infrastructure Facilities and Technology Committee. Resolution IT1 by Legislator House. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? 
Resolution authorizing budget modification with the highway department to transfer funds from insurance recovery fund to into highway expense. To the tune of ten thousand ten dollars for the accident the paper was in was in money. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT2 by Legislator House. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution to urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the deletion of one position in the highway department. Yes, I believe that uh, they're taking, uh, they're eliminating one position. Thank you. Any discussion? Legislator Castillo. This, uh, I don't see where we're, is this where we can lay somebody off or are we, the position's not filled? But we're eliminating position and usually we see later that we're going to create another position and I don't see that anywhere in IT, anywhere. I believe the position is vacant and choosing uh, the money in the next uh, resolution uh, for some additional hours, but not all of it. I, I will not be willing to stay with this. I, I can't see it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, Aye. are you voting yes? Okay. 23 in favor, sir. Thank you about my next argument. Yes, We're usually the quickest hands there. Yeah, ah, I know it. <laughs> not always quick that All right. Uh, related resolution IT3 by Legislator House. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge it to the House. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing and establishing an additional hours account line for the Department of Highway. Uh, it's pretty much self explanatory. You're looking, uh, I guess I really don't have that information. Here. Phil, can you fill that in? Choosing uh, 5000 from the salaries to. Right. Uh, and put into additional hours. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Castillo. Two points. What are the additional hours? Those are uh, if you need people to work uh, additional uh, beyond their normal 35. So in his office, you know, his office. So he's going to have them work 40 hours instead of 35. If needed, it's determined that the senior. Uh, like this position that was just deleted is not needed uh, and the, remain, the remaining staff could pick up some of that work but not it's not constant for every week but reading what what the description is there's not enough people to uh, complete the task I believe that's what he's saying but yet we're going to eliminate and not create another position to help to be able to get the task done in the normal work hours, so we're going to say now you got to work 30, 40 hours instead of 35. And I will not be in favor of this summer. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would prefer not to micromanage our department heads. Obviously, he's looked us over. He's figured out that this is going to work for him, and I will be supporting this. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul. Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, one opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT4 by Legislator House. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution establishing capital project number 0124, the Department of Highway Equipment, 2024. So apparently we're moving money, uh, $2 million from uh, Treasury hereby authorized to transfer $2 million highway appropriated fund balance in the chips. Uh, Oh, yeah. This is what we have to amend. Yeah, this is what we uh, need to amend that. Okay. It's the, uh, I think everybody has a copy of the replacement. Uh, the amendment is simply uh, not to create a capital project with the reserve money uh, or, uh, or with the highway fund balance, but to move it into their operating budget uh, in the equipment line. And the reason for that is New York State does not want Chips money uh, administered through a capital project. They want it shown in your operating budget. So uh, the amendment simply uh, puts money into the op chips operating budget rather than a unique chips capital project. 
Let's stay real. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll make the motion to replace the uh, IT4 in the packet with the one that's on our desks. Second. Thank you. We have that in a second. Uh, any discussion on the replacement? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. So back to that resolution uh, that's been reinserted in the packet. Any discussion? Same thing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. It's been brought to my attention that with our a bit of a new technology we're trying to roll out, that the uh, audience and some of the other live stream devices are not picking it up as much, so I would ask that you use your microphones as best you can. Well, I uh, took mine away because mine would then dominate and they would not hear. So we can either use our outside voices or use our microphones. Thank you. Resolution IT5 by <coughs> Legislator Huff. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution to the person's job. Now we're talking. I love my outside voice. <laughs> Would the clerk please read the heading? Resolution amending resolution number 415 dated December 14, 2023, capital project number 0423 to number E0423. Yes, uh, money for a couple new fuel trucks that we needed out there for the airport for a while. Yes. You want to talk on that? This resolution is simply just adding the E to the capital project that we're going to establish. In effect, an edit. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, one opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT6 by Legislator House. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will you take order to that, don't you take? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, would the clerk please read the header? Resolution authorizing budgetary <coughs> modification, Department of Solid Waste Landfills, and transfer stations, other equipment to additional hours of help. Okay, this is uh, well, basically as it was read. Thank you. Any discussion? Legislator Castillo. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just explaining my vote. There's several reasons why people come to vote, come to work for the, the county. One was uh, you didn't get a lot of pay, but you got a great benefit. So we still have great benefits, but you pay a pretty penny for those benefits. The second reason is you only work 35 hours a week, and a lot of people come because of that. Well, this is going to change them from 35 hours to 40 hours a week. And yeah, somebody will say, well, they're going to get they're getting a raise, so they get a raise in pay. They got to work for that raise. I, I just can't support something that because you can't get the work done in the number of hours that you're originally planned to do or scheduled to do, that you can add it, make it 40 hours a week so that you can get it done. I, I can't support that. Uh, I would see people added or overtime added, but I will not be in favor of this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, one opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT7 by Legislator House. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budgetary modification, buildings and grounds, increasing capital project number C0323, Oswego County, Florida. What's that? Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Moving now to the Finance Personnel Committee, Resolution FP1 by Legislator Walpole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the following resolution and recommend its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing execution of agreement with the Oswego County Deputies Association. As written, we have reached an agreement with the Deputies Association. I believe uh, I received some phone calls. Everyone seems to be very pleased with it. So members of the legislature, I'd like to congratulate everyone who worked on it. Yes, and I think that a big shout out to Legislator Walpole and others that worked on it. So thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Mr. Chairman, it's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one abstain. Thank you. Resolution FP2 by Legislator Walpole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the following resolution and recommend its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution adopting an investment policy and designating banks as depositories of county funds. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is an annual thing. I'm enabling us to continue to invest. Thank you. Any, thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Any unfinished business? Thank you. Any miscellaneous business? Thank you. At this time, uh, entertain a motion. Perhaps Mr. Mitchell could read the purpose uh, for executive session. The motion would be to go into executive session to discuss uh, pending litigation involving yeah. NSF. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Well, we need to read the rules. Yes, yeah, after executive session. Okay. After executive session, yeah. Mr. Chad. Um, oh. Yes. Do you want to waive them before the executive session before we come back? It's up to you. It's a, well, we're going to come. We have to come back in session to close out. We can waive the rules at that point. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 All right, let's stop. Uh, in the interest of keeping the public, we'll waive the rules now, go to executive session. So, Mr. House. Motion to waive the rules for GC6, IP8, and a resolution for the Addis Ethanol High School resolution, and then we're, uh, we'll take care of that. Thank you. Mr. The resolution you just mentioned for Addis. Pardon me? The resolution that you just mentioned for Addis. That's what I got written down here. We're going to discuss Addis in executive session. Right. We don't have a resolution for it. Thank you. Right. So Sorry. at this time, we just wait for the two. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll second the motion for GC6 and IT8 only. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We have a second. Any discussion on waiting for 6 and 8? All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, back to number 6. Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I'll send the resolution. Urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution awarding professional services contract RFP 23-CKLEG-001 Grant Consulting Service. This is the word of the county of Swedish business award of the RFP to the Junior Business Consulting and Grant Writing from Spencer Court, New York. Amount of $58,000 annually and $2,000 for miscellaneous expenses. And the second part of the award was the bar from the Jutenis PC for $20,000 per year. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT8 by Legislator House. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the chairman to execute a utility easement with Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation, DBA, National Grid, and Horizon New York, Inc. concerning the Oswego County Office Complex, Bunner Street. Yes, we're refabbing uh, the uh, Bunner Street project, and uh, unfortunately, there are poles in our way at the back of the building, so we're asking for this easement to be able to move this project along. All right, thank you. Understood. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul. Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Now, I would entertain a motion going to executive session. So moved. And the reason would be pending litigation in the Addis Ethanol Fulton facility. All right. And I would tell the public that we, uh, it doesn't appear that we'll make any action items after the executive session, but we will open the meeting back up for public comment. Is there any public comment at this point? I believe there was one. Yes, there is. There's one. Okay. Well, when we come back, yep. we'll do it. All right. Thank you. Executive session means uh, just a minute. Back in. Everybody ready? Let's call this meeting back to order. We have a new visitor. Uh, 
um, previously unannounced, as he was here for former legislator Bradley Trudell. Oh, Brad. Oh, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. House. Public comment period. Do you want to adjourn? Yes. Make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to come out of executive session. Now we need a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Thank you. Um, here you go. Why is C. Weisenberger? Yeah. There you go. A flag step. Thank you. Seen you before. Yes, you yeah. have. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you. Don't start the timer early on you know, last time. I'm long winded. Thank you for letting me speak. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, according to Channel 9 News reporting, the homeless rate in Oswego County has skyrocketed 400%. Within our county, Pulaski Central School has 42 homeless students, Mexico has 63, Central Square 87, Oswego 207. I didn't look at all the others, but they're available. That data is available at the NYSID Wake website. These numbers include students of all colors and backgrounds, not only black and brown skinned children. With this 400% increase in people who do not have housing, we need emergency shelters in the county, especially in the winter months when the temperature is often below freezing. What is it like to be a homeless student? It's a fourth grader stepping off a bus after school and getting right into her parents' car. The car is already packed with whatever will fit. There is no time to go inside and collect a favorite toy or say goodbye to a pet cat. If she's lucky, they'll go to a relative's house. If not, they'll sleep in the car. Imagine that fourth grader shivering in the back seat of her mother's car. She won't go to school the next day to be with her friends because her family will have moved to another school district. She'll move around a lot. She'll have no place to study and do her homework. Her grades will suffer. She may drop out to get a job to help support her family, but the problem snowballs and the cycle repeats. And that's not BS, that's real. There are people with real housing emergencies. A quick online search shows there are zero emergency shelters in Oswego County that are open 24 hours. Onondaga has three such shelters, but that's 33 miles away. With the 400% increase in people who do not have houses, we need emergency shelters in Oswego County. We need additional support from DSS to help people in need. Caseworkers should repay, be paid fair wages for the challenging work that they do. We need to encourage and support any and all affordable housing projects in every community. All people deserve safe, affordable housing, no matter the color of their skin, age, gender, or socioeconomic status. Our reluctance to assist homeless people gives Oswego County a bad reputation around the state. When you ask other people in other counties what they know about Oswego County, they cite child abuse, homelessness, and our high poverty rate, which, by the way, were fifth in the state for poverty, fifth. To bring business to this county and foster economic growth, growth you have to address the homeless situation and poverty. I know the go-to response tends to be blaming homelessness on immigration, but if you look at the data, that's not true. There's also a medieval attitude where poverty is seen as a matter of course. Nothing should be done to offer relief. I see today you voted on a Frisbee golf course for Camp Zerby, and I think that's great. That's great. But what about putting some money into doing something for homeless people in the county? It to do anything less is just cruelty. And is that who we are? 
thank you for your time. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. It is uh, going to start to snow a little bit, so drive safe. Thank you.